All right, so it's like Sunday night. I haven't really done anything interesting today at all. Went for a very long walk uh, this afternoon and was like on the phone with a friend of mine from England like the whole time. We were on the phone for like almost two hours just chatting about this and that, Hamilton. Uh, and then fell asleep. Came back, fell asleep. Not, I didn't fall asleep on the walk. Uh, and then woke up, dinked around, dishes, had family chat with my dad's side of the family. Yesterday was my mom's side of the family. And then at like 11.30, I remembered that tomorrow was Monday, which is kind of a weird thing to remember. But, um, there we go. Uh, I have one of my classes tomorrow is the last ever class with one of my favorite students, Shams because she's just fun, and she's chill, and she likes to have those, like, side conversations where you're not just doing, like, textbook work the whole time. You, like, go off in different areas or something. Uh, and when I'm, I think I've said this before, when I'm um, the last person to do a class with someone that I really like, I can't do it for every single student, but when I'm, when I've had someone for, like, a long time or something, I will bake them a goodbye thing. I've never tried this recipe before. It's a little bit of a discovery. They're called Carmelitas. Uh, and it's like flour, oats, brown sugar, butter, salt, baking soda. It's so like no egg in it at all. Which means it might be a tiny bit dense. Um, and then a layer of like chocolate chips. And then I added walnuts. It calls for pecans, but I didn't remember that I had pecans in my cabinet. Um, <laughs> so I found them as I was digging around for the chocolate chips. I could have added it, but I'd already chopped up walnuts that I'd bought in the store. And then a drizzle of caramel um, sauce that's like thickened with flour a little bit. And then some more crumble on top and it turns out to something like this. And this is still warm and I'm dying to know how it is. Well, it's very sweet. It's really nice. This would go really well with, like, a cup of coffee or tea. Okay. Yeah, it's like, the nuts are helping, too. Adds a different dimension. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. I wonder what it'll be like not warm from the oven. Good thing is, we have a microwave at work tomorrow. So if I decide that these are better warm, I can just nuke them. Anyway, I'm going to finish this and then brush my teeth. Good night. I think, <laughs> good morning. I think people are like getting tired of seeing me come to the castle. Is this the castle? Can you see it? Yeah. Here's more of the castle. Um, I don't know. I just like coming here. It's like a straight shot down a street from where I live so it's really easy to like navigate I can just mentally check out and then get there and go around kind of see cool architecture and then I know how long it'll take me to do the walk and how many steps will get me and it's just like a comfort so don't come for me not that anyone was actually coming for me uh you know how, like sometimes you get in your own head about like doing the same thing over and over again is that going to annoy people who are on your platform. Mm -hmm. And again, does it matter? Because you see it for two minutes. I'm here for like 20. So I should be the one who's, I'm worried about getting sick of stuff. There we go. Just talked myself into being better with it. Um, yeah, anyway, happy Monday, new week. I just remembered uh, sometime last week when I was like walking this road, uh, back from the Chateau, uh, I saw uh, somebody that I watch on YouTube. His name is Alex. His channel is called French Guy Cooking. I don't think he has, like, a huge number of followers. Um, I think he's, like, a, affiliated with Jamie Oliver in England, which, uh, but, but, sorry, I'm going by construction. Uh, just, like, walked by him a little bit back there, and I kind of did a double take of, like, I think 
but it was like a very chill double take because I was wearing my sunglasses. So it was just with my eyes. I guess not with like a doo 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 or something stupid like that. Um, and definitely like 95% sure it was him. And I just had this like moment, but I was already past him and I didn't want to be that crazy person who doubles back and tries to talk to someone. And I've never actually been in the position of having to talk to someone who is uh, what more well known than the average person by like, you know, a degree. So um, I was just like, oh, there, there's a someone, there's someone, cool. And it made me think like, I've not actually seen many famous people in France living in Paris. Like I've now seen Alex. A little bit before that, um, John and Kevin and Nish and I were like on a terrasse somewhere just like having a drink in the middle of the afternoon. And Kevin looks and goes like, oh, there's a comedian going that way going down the street, he does the thing about octopus. And I have no idea who he is, so I didn't register his name. He's like an older gentleman. Uh, I don't know. And then, um, what else? Oh, my, I think early into my second year living here, I saw Paul Hollywood in like the middle of a square. And he was like on the phone with someone, so I didn't even think about going up to talk to him. But, um, Everyone who I spoke to afterwards should have told me that I should have gone up and complimented his buns. So, uh, those are my big, not really encounters with people, but my big, um, uh, near brushes, near, uh, brush buys? Is there a word for that? Near miss? No. Close encounters of the third kind? There are three of them. Anyway, mini story time. Hello. Um, so, it is Tuesday. Today, watch... Why does it say Friday? It's definitely not Friday. Have I slept, like, four days and woken up to it being Friday is the third? No, I know what happened. When my watch uh, isn't recharged and, and runs out of battery, it just kind of stops at the last time that it had charge. So I obviously recharged it, but forgot to reset the date. I reset the time, but not the date. That's on me. In reality, it is Tuesday, the 7th of July, I want to say. I um, didn't work today because I'm still uh, limiting the number of days that I'm spending in the office um, for social distancing purposes, although I get the sense that I'm in the minority right now for that. Um, but it actually um, kind of landed uh, on a good day for me not to be in the office today because I feel like crap. Yeah, I haven't been able to muster up an immense amount of motivation to do things. Today I've just been feeling really gross and like, ugh, I just don't want to do anything. I did at like 5 p.m. force myself to go grocery shopping and just like get a couple of um, like meals thing. I like did a little bit of meal planning and all of that. And, um, I got like chicken that I'm going to go roast now. Got the oven preheating because it's like 8 PM now, 8 20. Uh, and I'm, I'm honestly not hungry, but in the hour it'll take to preheat and cook, I'll probably get hungry. So in the meantime, I have decided that I am going to be, I'm sorry I did that. That's really gross. I think that's offensive in some parts of the world. Is that offensive in Japan? I won't do it again. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, uh, I have decided that I will be productive in some way. That is all laundry. Clean laundry. But I just haven't, I, I did, I did a, um, a kick last, at the end of last week when I had like a day or so off and I just like did three loads of laundry in a row and then as they were drying I would just throw them there and think like okay so I'll put it away when everything's dry and then things didn't end up drying until like three in the morning and I was not going to do it then and I haven't done it since so I'm gonna do karaoke I'm gonna sing my heart out not really because neighbors um but gonna get some get some movement on that 
might sort it into categories. It's also like a very, very large pile. Look at that. Literally my entire couch is swallowed by this pile because if you'll recall, there was a time when there was just like messy, messy piles here like this. If I was taking a, this is our tank tops, like sleeveless things. This is all printed graphic tees. This is regular t-shirts. This is long sleeve shirts. See, there's a method. Um, but there was a time, like, any time I would pull a shirt out from kind of the middle or the bottom, it would upset a lot of the things that were on top of it, and it just got really messy. So I just kind of yanked out everything that was starting to get really crumpled up or unfolded and just dumped it there as well, which is why that pile is so big. That's not all laundry. That's also clothes that just need to be refolded. Although in yanking that, I have kind of unsettled the pile a little bit. Uh Funny fact about me, I used to work in my college bookstore at DePaul, and uh, this bookstore also had a merchandise uh, part. Actually, it was like half merch, half, um, here we go, half merch, half uh, books. Uh, and we had like people who worked exclusively in the text section and people who worked mostly exclusively in the merch section, and I did both more in the merch stuff. I was a lot on the cashiers and the restocks and all of that, but I also did text stuff sometimes. There were, especially just before a semester started when everyone was ordering books, I was a, a processing demon. I'd be in the back processing orders and all that and fulfilling and packaging and all of that. I was a little devil. I had like a seven hour shift and I would just have the music on in the back room computer and just go, 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 go. And that's kind of what I'm planning on doing here. But the reason that I say this is uh, it gave me working in the merch part with all the clothes and like the pennants and everything gave me a very uh, critical eye for stacks of shirts, stacks of clothing, um, kind of having everything squared off and aligned more or less. If it's the same print, obviously, it should have like the same, the fold in the same part of the shirt, uh, etc. And we had like those, those uh, square plastic, like, there weren't sheets, like, not bricks either. It was like a sheet, it was like a very thick piece of square plastic that you would use to, like, frame the folded t-shirt so you get the same shape each time. And uh, I don't have one of those, but it gave me an eye for, like, more or less how it's supposed to happen. So, like, all of the sweaters that I have up here, even though this one I need to redo because I, th I think I considered wearing it at one point and then decided that I didn't want to because it was too warm. And then I couldn't get it up properly because I need um, a chair to get up to that shelf comfortably. Actually, I'll just pull it down now. Gotta act on it. But everything else it has the same fold. So I every single time I fold my laundry, I think back to just the mountain of clothing that people picked up in a store, thought about buying, <clears throat> shook out to check how it looked on them didn't end up buying it and then just kind of threw it back on the thing. And then every hour or so we had to send someone out into all of the, it wasn't a very big store, but send them out into the, on the floor, pull everything that wasn't proper, dump it on the counter. And then we would have like a folding party with two or three people. It was, um, if you had the right people and you had the right like station playing on the radio it was actually really fun because I'm a nerd. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to throw on maybe my Disney playlist. Get some energy going, get a little, and um, see if I can have a couch back at the end of the day. Uh, cool. On to find my future things my heart still needs to know. Yes. Purple rain. Oh. Tied with a bow. Oh, ugly. What's in it? What's in it? That's the point of the thing, not to know. It's a bat. It's a rat! Crazy, but I don't care. Tribulations, no, I've had my share. But he was mean and he was coarse and unrefined. And now he's dear and so unsure. I wonder why I didn't see it there before. You know, I think there's something there that wasn't there before. You want thingamabobs? I got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. Yeah. Yeah.
you down in the muck here under the sea. Bum, 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 bum. Song's a little bit racist. In pain, in need. This one longing to be thinner, that one wants to get the girl, and do I help them? Yes, indeed. And don't underestimate the importance of body language. I'm a very busy woman and I haven't got all day. It won't cost much. Just your voice. I'm never gonna catch my breath. Sing about of those who knew me. Boy, was I a fool in school for a cutting gym. We must be swift as the coursing river. With all the force of a great typhoon. Imagine the reward her dear old grandma will pay. Who else can pull it off but you and me? Land a song someone sings once upon a December. Now here we stand, unafraid of the future. At the beginning with you. In a spinning match, nobody spits like Gaston. I'm especially good at expectorating. Twee! <laughs> so dumb! <laughs> Enjoying the wind? <laughs> Very windy today. Uh, Wednesday, I came back to the castle for a walk, because I can, and I'm not even guilty about it this time. Uh, the plan, let me go this way, I think. The plan for today is um, I'm going to finish my walk, go home, shower, eat something for lunch, and then I'm going to head out to go to the fifth, like, neighborhood, the fifth district, to meet up with Nisha and Amelie for a little, like, cake and coffee slash tea and just ketchup, like a girl's ketchup. And then I only get to spend about an hour there, and then I have to run off to work, and I'll be teaching from four to eight. And then I run home. Uh, this is a little bit of a runaround day, which is why I'm out now getting my walk in, because I know, like, when I have days with a lot of bam, 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 different activities, different places to go. Sometimes I can meet my 10,000 without, you know, doing anything extra, just going from one place to the next gets me there. But today it's kind of go somewhere and sit, and then go to the next place and sit, and then go to the next place and sit. So I wanted to add in a thing at the beginning of the day, make sure that I had my, like, lock, that I had my, um, Advance, like, oh, what's the word that I want? Head start on it. So, I'm sorry, I'm having to pay attention or I'm walking. This is a very rocky path in front of me. I'm not trying to twist an ankle. Because also, I do not have my wallet with me, I don't have my insurance card. It'd be very complicated to get treatment if I were to hurt myself. So, thank you first. Anyway, um, I'm now over halfway through this walk. Uh, I actually have like four like touch points to kind of measure without looking at distance and time how far away I am from home uh, and it starts when I get to the end of the castle so for my apartment there's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and then 0.4 is the front of the castle and then I loop around the castle and then do 4, 3, 2, 1 back. Do you want to see what those points are? Okay. Here is point number one, or point number zero, starting point, edge of castle. This like lovely garden zone down the middle of the street. That's starting point. Okay, point one. End of the pedestrian boulevard, beginning of street traffic. We're going to the little street just in there. Okay. This is not an official point, call it point 1.5. Um, I have no idea why there's a portrait of Abraham Lincoln on this mailbox, but I like it. It's very distinguished. All right, point two, where two roads become one. Because this road right here and this one become one single road. See that? 
2.5 random penguin pictures that have since been like very vandalized but they still cute look at those two having an egg together that's so sweet point three is this little corner cute little street corner including this bakery and every time I walk by it it's either closed or has a big line of people outside of it uh, so clearly it's something something special or it's the only bakery in the neighborhood. I don't know. And point number four. Home. No, keep my eye out. Yeah. Should we send a photo to Connor? No. <laughs> yeah. I'm worried about my knees. So I don't want to give up the pastry cream or raspberry. Um, oh. I'm feeling Hey Nisha. <laughs> what is this? A green iced <laughs> Where is it? Iced, iced. <laughs> and uh, I just have like all of the red fruits in a granita thingy. And we've just been a ridiculous amount of shopping. Yeah. For me. A reasonable amount of shopping for you. In, and, in person, online, online no. Nah. That's where we invert. Yeah. I have now finished with Nisha, she's gone home. I am uh, on my way to work and just wanted to show you the uh, church that I got out of the metro next to. The Madeleine, a very famous church that I'm not going into. Anyway, bye. Hey, guess what? It is almost 10.30 p.m. and I'm still at the work place. The work place? I'm still at work, I'm still at the office. I'm still here. Um, I finished shopping with Nisha a while ago and then got took the train to Madeleine, which is like a 20, 25 minute walk to work. So I very intelligently did that while carrying two big ass shopping bags on my shoulders because I'm a smarty pants. Uh, and then proceeded to teach for four and a half hours. Uh, so I finished teaching at 10 and I I hate eating super late. I hate eating at like 11, 11.30 p.m. when I finally like get home and have something like ready to eat. So um, what I did is I, uh, yesterday when I was at work, I brought some food with me, put it in the fridge, the company fridge, and then um, just intended to eat it today after my last class. So I was always, I don't know, I was always planning on having dinner here at like 10 p.m. after my class. And here's what it is. It doesn't look very appetizing in the photo, but it is lentils and it's not barley, similar to barley, I can't remember what it's called, and roasted broccoli and fried chorizo and avocado. It was like the most perfect avocado. I'm so not brown or mushy at all, but still ripe. Oh. So I'm gonna eat this, go home, and then unpack everything I got from Primark. I love Primark. I'm back from work. It's like midnight. And I, instead of being a reasonable person and getting ready for bed, decided to dump everything that I got today while shopping with Nisha on my bed. <laughs> this one is the one that makes me laugh the most. I got, I was sitting on it slightly, whoops, I got um, a uh, dressing gown, I suppose you could call it. Like I have a bathrobe already, but that's very like, you know, flannelly material and like, um, you know, thick and warm and stuff. And in the summer, you want something lighter. So <laughs> I have this with the crazy 80s pattern. It looks like it should be in Golden Girls, honestly. And, uh, you know, just when you're not quite ready to get dressed, but don't want to be 100% completely naked, you can wear this. <laughs> then we also went to Yves Rocher, and I swear to Moses, this is so good. This coriander, mango coriander, they have like a whole line of it, but I got the shower gel and it's just 
And I know it's like the worst YouTube crime in the world to like smell something on camera because the audience can't smell it, but oh, I love it so much. I love it so much that I also got it in um, lotion form, energizing body lotion. I didn't actually test to see if it smells the same, but it does. Oh, oh, I love it so much. Oh, I love like a fruity, tropical smell. And yet, I hate the smell of coconut. Contradictions. And then, uh, wait, no, wait, I bought, I also bought mascara when I was there. And uh, I have no idea if it's going to be nice, but it was like 50% off, so I figured... Um, oh yeah, and hair oil. And then, Ebroche, if you have a membership there, which I do, like, anytime you get something from the store, they give you, like, samples and free crap. So now I also have Hello Printemps, Hello Spring shower gel, and My Green Summer shower gel. And I don't know what either of those smell like. Let's see, Spring smells like very... Very flowery, very, like, traditional perfumey. It's nice. And summer smells like, hmm, kind of herby. I have no idea what the ingredients mean. Cy Centauria cyanus flower water. I don't know. Ah, that, 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 thing, that thing that I did right there, that... That is a very French thing. It's like the French equivalent of going, uh oh. And I have picked it up, and I do it all the time, and it really annoys me. Because, like, as a teacher, when I ask my students a question, and they just go, Pff. I'm like, that's not English. If you don't know, say, I don't know. But they all just go, Pff. And now I do it, too, and I annoy myself. <laughs> I got a razor with 25 replacements. <laughs> this... However, with only five euros, there is a store at the mall called Normal, and it just sells, like, low-cost versions of, like, I'll, uh, I don't actually know what brand this is. Maybe I just spent five euros on a piece of crap shaving system. But then they also sell, like, Tresemme shampoo. I love Tresemme. And they sell, this was for, like, three fifty, which, you know... In any other grocery store, you buy, like, a bottle of shampoo for three fifty, and it's, like, a third of this size. So, I mean, I'm not regretting... Ooh, look at that. There's a little bubble coming out. A little bubble. Hello, little bubble. Wee! Ugh. Yes. I love the smell of this stuff. I love Tresemme. 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 Ooh, la, la. That was a commercial once, right? I don't know. It's after midnight. I don't know what I'm saying. I also got the conditioner of the same kind, because you have to match. They're chemically designed to match. I got taco seasoning. Why? Not at Primark. This was at Normal. Uh, this is all mixed up, by the way. All the clothing stuff is from Primark. All of the Yves Rocher stuff is from Yves Rocher. Go figure that. And then all the other cosmetic stuff is from... And for some reason, taco seasoning is from Normal. It says, damn, it's good. And then the translation is, taco crittery. And then it's crittier, critter, cruden. And then a piece pour tacos. And the brand is, damn, it's good. I'm surprised that they could call that a thing, call that a name. But you know what? Why not? Hey, it is Friday. Um, I'm outside. Uh, not working today. Friday tends to be my day off. Unless I schedule something on a Friday, like I did today. I was just at the doctor's office. It was fine. Uh, and now I'm in front of this really cool building, and I have actually no idea what it's for. It says Love Hotel. It says Love Hotel. I don't know what that means. Love Hotel? There's a pair of underwear. Wait. There's a pair of underwear painted onto a clothesline. So, you know, that's cool. I honestly... Free for toy. Huh? Is this a sex dungeon? This might be a sex dungeon. Also, underneath the face there, it says Maison Sérieuse. It's a serious house. Um, so, I have never seen this before. I don't think I've ever been on this street before. Uh, this is, as it turns out, a street that you take to go from my doctor's office to John and Kevin's apartment. I'm going to go have lunch with Kevin. John won't be there. Suck it, John. Ha, -ha. Um, And on my way, I 
while looking at Google Maps, realized this whole wall of murals behind me, which is also very cool, is actually the back wall for Père Lachaise Cemetery. So, like, a bunch of famous people are buried just, uh, like, over that little hill there. I'm not going to go in because there's not really access on this side, but I really just wanted to show off, look how cool this wall is. I don't even know if these are words. I, I've never been able to read graffiti writing, but like, this is all very cool. I have to imagine this might have been like commissioned. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm listening to a podcast um, about people, uh, um, the Harry Potter, oh, bottle, <laughs> the Harry Potter podcast, uh, and Oh, there is a way to get in. Oh, no, this isn't Salishes then. Where is Salishes? Anyway, this is a podcast about Harry Potter by someone who hadn't read them as a child and is reading them chapter by chapter and analyzing them. And it is um, revealing how much of a mess the series actually is. And without the nostalgia, it's uh, way less impactful. But it's okay. Let's see. Okay, so Salishes starts just there. So, I was at the wall leading up to it. Cool. Anyway, I'm not going to go in. Um, I don't have time. I have to go meet Kevin. He's waiting for me. Hey, happy Saturday. What's happening to my voice? I don't know. This is, this has been happening to me all day. And yes, I taught today. I taught on a Saturday. And my voice was kind of scritching in and out. I woke up with a sore throat and I don't know why. I took my temperature this morning too, and it didn't seem like highly elevated. It was like 99.1 or something, which is obviously higher than normal, but not like concerning. So that's fun. But anyway, it's like, what time is it? 8.30-ish? Yeah, 8.30. Um, and I am eating, you know, I'm eating caprese. And I also have some chachachaj that I grilled off and some green beans that I steamed. And then the, it, this is just like a shark fin of watermelon. I just ended up carving it like that and none of my other bigger plates were immediately available. So I just put it on a smaller one and stood it up on its end and it looks like da-dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. And I realized as I was putting this together that I've basically put together like barbecue style food, which is a little bit silly because tomorrow I'm going to a barbecue. <laughs> Repetitive. That's fine. Um, but tonight, after all of this, I'm also going to be preparing um, a desserty thing for the barbecue tomorrow because it has to go in the fridge. So, you want to join me on that? Great. But first, I'm going to eat. Hi, hello, and welcome to my workstation. I've got a uh, cookie batter right here. Look at that. Oh, so delicious. It's kind of still dripping from the beater. That's nice and unctuous. And um, can you see where the flower attacked me? Jesus. I should I should get an apron. I really should get an apron, but I haven't done it. Anyway, I've never tried this recipe before. It is a snickerdoodle cheesecake bar thing. So this is about like half of it. And then you put like a cream cheese layer in the middle and then you sprinkle more on top and then you bake it and it comes out to look like, can I find it? That. This, this right here is much more unctuous than a cookie dough batter usually is. It's usually more like crumbly almost. So I think, and I've already added in more flour than the recipe calls for. And I don't want it to be super like chewy, cakey, whatever. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deviate from the recipe a little bit. And it says um, that you're supposed to press half of the thing into a pan, add a cheesecake, the cheesecake gooey cheesecake layer, and then sprinkle the rest of it over the top. I kind of think if you have gooey and gooey and gooey, the bottom layer, the, the middle is not gonna bake all the way through and it's just not gonna be a little bit. It's not going to be the greatest textural experience. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pivot. I'm going to put in some of this in the cake tin, 
the bottom layer and bake it for like 10 minutes and just get like an, an initial um, bake going. So then when I do the cheesecake and then the rest of it on top, it has a head start, I think. I'm gonna try it. And if that's not the way the author did it, I don't know. And if I end up having to do something else, I'll do something else. It's not the end of the world. Okay, it is, um, I can't really show it to you very well, uh, slightly golden toasted. Okay, so let's, um, let's pour some cheesecake on top of it and hope it works out. Too much. This is going to overflow. This is a disaster. Great. Excellent. Wonderful. Doing really well. Very messy. I know. This looks nothing at all like the website, but, um, uh, let's pray. It's going to expand and I really hope it doesn't overflow. Oh, I'm so nervous. Maybe I'll put a tray underneath it. That's not a bad idea. Hey, uh, Sunday morning. I should be in bed right now. Instead, I'm going to the RER station to go to the suburbs. We're doing a barbecue today. I totally, totally forgot to film anything of the end of desserts last night. And I woke up at like 6 a.m. to make a cornbread so I'd have time to bake and cool before I could transport it because day old cornbread's not so nice. So, um, Going to meet John and Kevin at the train station, taking the train to the suburbs. I mean, he's going to pick us up at the train station, drive us to the house, and then we're going to chew it up. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> C'est pas un chat de secours. So this is not chocolate mousse. What's in this again? Aubergines. Eggplant. Whoa! That is definitely not chocolate mousse. But it is delicious. I hope. Well done. Yes. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well Oh man. Oh no, that's well. Oh, can you have it? You have. How many drinking vessels are on this table right now? Like au moins deux chaque personne. That's it's like a that's like a boat or a ship. Donc du coup, j'avais euh, décidé Donc toutes les personnes qui font une partie bah, de Bibi. Le Bibi bam les capitaines. Ouais. <rire> du coup, Scarlet by by Tree. Non, on a fait la fin. Moi je vais raconter la fin. Ah si j'ai eu. Plus B victime. Ouais. Uh -huh. By the way, c'est écrit comme ça plus B ou pas du tout. C'est pas grave.
Il y a un monsieur qui se prend un truc. Why the tree? I don't know. Because you play frisbee in a park. You're throwing. Et du coup, ouais. Carried by Trish. Je pense que je peux ramener. Et tu crois qu'il y a une. The barbecue is too cold to make s'mores, so John's using the sun. Is it working? No. Okay. <laughs> 